Yeah, we're going to so we're going to back up and so Voxel Impact is four things. I don't have my phone. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you smell really good by the way. What is that? This is going to sound really weird. I, I, I got the same stuff I use wears. He left it in the bathroom really? one day, and I, I started smell. I was like, "Bro, every time the dude comes up and shakes my hand, I'm like, he, smells he smells really good, bro." <laughs> so I went and bought some. <laughs> that, that's funny. Yeah, but that smells good. It does. All right, here we go. So Voxel Impact is defined as four things, right? And this is why you're here today to talk about the impact that Voxel, uh, as the organization, somebody in Voxel has had on your life. So Voxel Impact is follow up. There has to be follow up with Voxel Impact. I think that there are outliers whenever it comes to impact where it's like, whoa, this one person, this one moment has changed my life forever. But I think that that can be a cop out whenever you look at trying to scale impact because you can be, like, oh, I impacted that person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. But like, I think that is, I think that as people who work in here at Voxo and impact is something that we want to do, we need to be intentional about following up with that person. So follow up, having multiple conversations, influence, they are gaining influence over your life, in turn, uh, earning trust, change, you changing habits or you changing your mindset whenever it comes to certain things that that person has influenced you in. And then lastly is God. Please, God's principles are being taught uh, to you. This isn't something that somebody just uh, thought up and was like, oh, I need to tell them. This ain't something that they're not practicing, you know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's God's principles. You can point to it in the word and say, yo, like, I see where he got that from. Now I can teach somebody from this same scripture, from the same scripture, from the same quote that Jesus said, like something like that. You feel what I'm saying? For sure. So, man, let's dive into your Voxel Impact story. First off, thank you for being here today. Again. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, let's back all the way up to first off, let's let's back even further up to like how people don't know that we know each other. They may think the man chance is so hard on him. He's so rude to Wesley. Wesley, but dude, we we have a very long track record of knowing. We've known each other basically almost our whole lives. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, from middle school, you were on drumline with Lacey in middle school. One, my older sister, right? Yeah. Uh, she was actually was she like first chair? Oh yeah, dude. She was like first, and I was last chair that year. I, I'll never. I sucked. Yeah, that was, that was so yeah. Bad. Wesley, let, my sister was better than Wesley at <laughs> drums, but then he 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 came up and he got better, and from then on he was like captain. He was my captain in in high school, and I don't I don't think I was in middle school. Was I in middle school with you? Nah, you're two years no. younger. So gotcha. Yeah, I was not in middle school with Wesley, but he <clears> was he was my captain in high school. He was my drum captain in college. And uh, yeah, so me and Wesley, we did high school together. Like it was, it was some fun times. So I've known you for that for that long, for sure. Uh, Wesley, how did you, how did you come to Novoxo? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, again, it was you coming, uh, I believe, to the mall when I worked at the mall. I, I, I'm pretty sure that was the correct story. Absolutely, there. I but think it is. You came up there and you were just talking to us and you talked about how you um, you were working at O'Reilly's. And you had met, I thought it was just Joe, but I think hearing the stories, it might have been Joe and Phil. Absolutely. But back then, I thought it was just Joe. But uh, you pulled up beside them at a red light, and he was in a Tesla. And yep. you asked them uh, in chance fashion, you're just really social. So you were like, <laughs> hey, how do I do this? Or how do I get one of those? Or something like that. Yeah. So. And you, you wound up talking to them and, and you know coming along here. So that was the first time I ever heard about it. I still didn't know what they did or what Voxa does. Um it, whatever up until still don't know. yeah <laughs> i still don't know i support it and i have no idea but uh <laughs> up until really i started working here even during the interview process i didn't know what your what interview process was a process of four years pretty much because you you <laughs> interviewed early on before yeah. we, before the merger and you came on to the office in Belgrass. You came to the office in Belgrass. Yeah. And I spilled the beans about your fight in high school that took place. This wasn't recent. This was high school. And, um, yeah, so after that, how many, like three, four years passed. Yeah. Yeah, and then we, um, I guess a year and a half ago, whenever that was, is whenever I, I messaged you. I think I, I think I just sent you a text message 
pretending I didn't understand the application process, uh, so I could kind of throw a nugget out there that I was interested in working here. Yep. And pretending that you didn't understand. Yeah, that. no, I completely knew what I was doing. I was just making sure you knew I was interested. <laughs> and uh, you were like, "Wait, are you actually still interested?" And I was like, "Absolutely." So, and then that's when everything kind of got going because I believe those BDR positions hiring at the yeah. moment. Uh, in full transparency, since that's what I've learned yep. <laughs> here, is uh, I knew I wasn't going to be great at sales. <laughs> really? <laughs> but I really wanted to come along here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's, that's just, funny. Yeah. So, who, who was on the team whenever you first came on? It was uh, Zach, Spencer, uh, and Drake, as far as actual just BDRs. And, uh, you know, I was, I was telling you, man, like, Spencer was actually the first guy to really start talking to me. Like when I first came here, I mean everybody's That's, everybody's been cool, but it yeah. was like, like it's it's funny, man, because Spencer, you know, Spencer, it's Spencer, Spencer, Spencer. I would have never guessed that. Yeah, but yeah, never. man, it, it it was a cool thing, man. He came up and like really really welcomed me yeah. and just was open and, and was talking to me and stuff. It was cool. It was cool. I, I can I can actually see Spencer doing this. Yeah, like acting like he's the he's the big dog around <laughs> the office. It's King Spence, man. King Spence. Hi, I'm King Spence. Who are you? <laughs> I don't know if he was you called know? King quite then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's always been a king. Yeah. but so so then let's let's back up even further to your first time coming on who was who was working at voxel then again uh, noah anthony you joe and yep. phil for sure yep. and like we had talked earlier you said you if anthony it was, was here then james was definitely here yeah and again i, I am 99 percent sure that was anthony unless y'all had another filipino working with never y'all. have had another so. <laughs> filipino working here. or as my yeah. kids say the jalapeno gotcha so. so now that was that was so i met joe and phil like 2016 2017 somewhere around there 2019 you came in for your first interview 2022 2021 when did you start working here uh what year is it now 2024 24. time goes by fast man uh All so right. it was it was 2023. It was it was like July of 23. Yeah, you started working here, so either July or to the wise, don't give up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So whenever you start working here, um, the person that you after reading your impact uh, your impact form, uh, Brennan, you mentioned Brennan. Yeah. And he wasn't here at the time when you whenever you came in. Whenever he did come on to Voxo, how was y'all's relationship then? Yeah, I mean it. It was. We didn't really talk that much initially, um, just because I am who I am. Uh, sometimes I kind of stay off to myself a little bit. Yep. But I believe he started kind of talking to me a little bit about just kind of how to up our numbers with, you know, leads and, and things like that. And then we started playing uh, ping pong together. And the more it just kind of – it just started morphing into, like, deeper conversations and then things in my life started happening – and he was he was interested in talking to me about things and giving me advice. So then we started going out to lunch and stuff like that together pretty frequently and having having good good talks. Gotcha. So things started happening. What kind of things started happening? If you don't mind sharing. Yeah, for sure, man. Just uh, within my marriage, man. Just that that started kind of falling apart, um, kind of seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, you know, which I feel like that is the story for most people. It just yeah. kind of comes out of nowhere. But uh, that started happening, man, and that just that snowballs into everything, man, because you know that's not something anybody ever wants to go through. But it it, it started impacting everything. So like everything, like what work related, yeah. friendships, um, just personal hobbies. Literally every aspect of my life was was empty, I guess, if that's mm. the way of saying it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. What do you remember the first? conversation you had with Brennan talking about about this stuff yeah I don't remember of course like word for word but I remember he was he was very adamant and I mean you were too and so was Joe and all all, you know anybody that I talked to about stuff but very adamant about not giving up uh just kind of continuing to push forward and and things like that so that was definitely part of the first conversation me and him had for sure yeah if you could if you could point to if you could point to the impact and give it a name, right, mm-hmm. that has happened to you, like through Brennan's influence, if you could give it a word, like a name, what would it be? Like Brennan has impacted me in this area. And because of this, that Brennan helped me 
realize. You you get, you kind of yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, I, I don't know if this would be the word you're looking for, man. But transparency is is the yeah. Minimum, so yeah. Where do you where do you lack in transparency? So I've always lacked in transparency and the, the fact of I'm, I just don't talk about it. Mm. Um, I've never been, I've never lied about things. Uh, I don't, I don't do that, but I just always bottle everything up, even when it's bothering me. And which is, I mean, everybody knows that's not a good, healthy way of doing things. Um, but I would just, you know, somebody asks, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Even if I'm very absolutely, generic. yeah, very generic, even if I'm absolutely terrible. So really with that, man, just being able to open up about the struggles that I'm going through both in marriage and uh, with my faith and things like that. It was, it, it was, it was like, I think I told you earlier, man, like he didn't necessarily say something that made me transparent, but he opened the door and allowed me to walk through it to be transparent. What does that mean though? Like if I want to open the door yeah. and allow someone to be transparent with me, what would you recommend I do? Just, just be, just be real and almost instill like, I mean, it's, it's a trust thing for sure, but just, just being absolutely real with somebody and having an open ear, and I mean, that's really it, man. Just just opening that door as far as like, hey, you can talk to me about things, and it's not going to be a judgmental response, and gotcha. it's, it's going to okay. be a good... Also, you know, with you, Joe, him as well, because, again, I've talked to all of you about this stuff, the, the advice was never... Um, Bias? it was never biased, which is great. And it was also like spiritually driven advice or scripturally driven advice. Yeah. Too. Okay. Gotcha. So just be, just be real, build that trust. You said that y'all, y'all spent a lot of time doing lunch. Was mm -hmm. it, did y'all only spend time doing lunch whenever he found out about your situation, about what you were going through or was like where the lunch is factored in before? I think if I remember correctly, again, the time frame is kind of weird because yeah. it's just everything's a little foggy from the that. last year. But I, I, I feel like we did go to lunch a couple times before. And then because, I mean, he started right around the time that everything kind of started going downhill yeah. in my personal life. Gotcha. He, so he started in October ish. And that's kind of when everything started. Gotcha. So I kept it to myself for a while. But then we kind of started going to lunch. And then I just kind of I guess we started talking about just life a yeah. little bit and then it just kind of opened up yeah so what is one thing that he pointed to whenever it came to like encouraging you like what is something that he like was this something that he just thought of or was it like actual word like scripture that you can go to and say yo this is yeah so and like I, I, me and you were talking a little bit ago um it's funny because the the verse that I was given basically through Brennan. It, it wasn't necessarily Brennan. I mean, there's been verses he's given me, but the one that stuck with me the most was because he set up a meeting with Joe and Doc. Yeah. And the, now that I actually remember the, the the number of it, it's Romans ten seventeen. Yep. Um. Again, like I said earlier, I'm really bad. Do you at, remember the scripture? Because I, I forgot. Yeah. So I mean, it's basically. Um, Faith is earned by hearing, and hearing is through the Word of God. Something Absolutely. along those lines. Gotcha. But um, I've always struggled because, um, you know, some people's testimonies are just so, like, big. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I don't know how to explain miraculous. that. Miraculous. Yeah, it, it almost yeah. seems like something has to, like, I have to audibly hear something, or I have to absolutely see something. And again, looking back at it now, man, there's obviously things that's happened in my life that's like, man, that was that was because of God. Yeah. Like, looking back at it, but I've always kind of struggled and questioned, like, man, am I saved? Because I don't, I don't get the same feeling that some of these other people get. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I get that, and and things like that. But reading that and and, and discussing that with them, it, it was a big deal because then it's like, okay, because I'm a very literal person as mm -hmm. well. So yeah. reading that and then understanding that. The scriptures that I had started reading after that, I was like, man, these really are playing into the, to my life, basically. So it sounds like he wasn't intimidated by your doubt. Oh, for sure. And he was willing to go down that road mm -hmm. with you. What about whenever it came to, like, whenever it came to your marriage? Like, what are some things that you, you mentioned one earlier, like, just don't give up. But yeah. was there anything else that he would encourage you to do? Man, uh, the the biggest 
was um, be slow to anger and really think about what I'm going to say and things like that before I say it. Yeah. Um, and I know that that almost sounds generic because that's a lot of people hear that. I mean, that's a um, that's a Bible verse too, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Yeah. I don't so, know where it's, where where it's found. But. So uh, you know, I mean, it sounds generic, but that's I mean, we all know anybody who's married or anybody who's lived with anybody. Period. That's hard to do. Yeah. Because uh, we all we press each other's buttons. I mean, that's just that's what we do, man. Absolutely. We're humans. We're gonna make each other mad. But uh, you know, and I, I'm not gonna sit here and say that you know the advice he gave me, I always did it. So, I mean, I still fail daily, but it did help me to slow down mm. Like whenever things would really, because I was angry. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, I would slow down and, and really think about what I was going to say. And that's carried over to my kids, like me doing that with my kids as really? well, mm-hmm, for sure. Wow. And and other people, man. Um, I'm, again, I, I do still fail daily, but... I make sure to, I, I try to be thoughtful with what I say as far as I'm not going to tear somebody down for yeah. sure. So I feel that, man. That's, that's some good stuff. Uh, so Brennan, that's a good dude, man. I pick, yeah. I pick on big Brennan a lot. Yeah. Only <laughs> child, like all that yeah. stuff. I pick on him a lot, but like, man, he's a, he's a good dude. One thing about me, bro, I'm picking on you, but I'm also watching you, you know? And like, I watch this dude and, not like creepy. I got a feeling that somebody's <laughs> yeah. watching me. You know, but like I watch this dude, man, and he's a man of character. Yeah, for sure. Like he is, man. And, <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, not a show at all. It's not, dude. And the fact that he impacted you in that in that way and I challenged you and just didn't agree with everything that you were telling him. Like, yeah. man, that's 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 pretty powerful, bro. Absolutely, man. That's and pretty powerful. Yeah. More people need people like Brendan. Absolutely. So. If you could give some advice to someone, right? A couple things that you're talking to another Wesley, mm-hmm. right? Somebody that struggles with being transparent, somebody that is closed off, somebody that won't let anybody in. What would you? What advice would you give them? That it's okay to let people in. Uh, you know, obviously, you know. I think I've even heard you say this before, man. Not you don't just being transparent doesn't mean you let everyone in all the time. Mm-hmm. But understanding that there are people that care about you absolutely, uh, and, and it's OK to be transparent and, and just open with things that you're struggling with, man, because that's what like we're, we're, su- we're supposed to do. Really, mm. I mean, we're supposed to be open with them. So and the people that really care about you aren't going to judge you for the things that you're struggling with. And, you know, if you find somebody like Brennan or, or the other people that I've talked to around here, too, uh, for sure. They're not going to give you, they're not going to be just your sounding board. Absolutely. It, and that's not what you need. You don't need a sounding board. You need people to be real. Yeah. So just just do it. I mean, it's, just, just do it. That's amazing. Man, what would, what principles will you teach your, you know, like we've talked about them, but like what will you teach your kids like about all of this? Yeah, man, that just, that they can be transparent with me as their father. Um you know, I've told you kind of I grew up in a house that wasn't like that at all. So I hope that I can really instill in them like, hey, if you ever need something to, to talk about, man, like come to me. And also, um, you know, t- me and Taylor's both done a good job at this, man. They're 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 spiritually strong. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, the childlike faith thing is is real with them man. Mm-hmm. they're they're very strong in their faith walk for sure, which is it's awesome to see. But really, just transparency, man. Don't hold things in. If something's bothering you, if something's on your mind, don't don't let it fester. Yeah, that's that's probably the biggest thing. I, I want to ask why, because it's not going to lead to anything good if you let it fester. Yeah, it's just going to build up, and then you know the human side of us. There's going to be an explosion at some point. There's always going to be an explosion. Mm. So being transparent, man, it's just it's a big deal. I mean, getting getting the feelings out there, obviously within reason. Um, and knowing you can trust other people. Mm. You got any last words for uh, Brennan, the person, the guy, the, the guy, the guy? Um, no, nah, man. Just you know, again, I'm I'm incredibly grateful that I met you, Brennan. I uh, didn't know you a year ago, year and a half ago, something in that that time frame. But I consider you one of my best friends now, and uh, I'm happy to have met you, man. You've you have impacted me in a way that's. Not just, you know, obviously there's not always a happy ending to everything that people get help with, but mm-hmm. it is 
it's going to help me moving forward in life and being a better father too, which is the most important thing. So yeah. thank you. That's, a, that's, a, that's, that's incredible, bro. Like you said, there's not always a happy ending. Like we know that like you went through the divorce, it's yeah. final, it's done and it's not what you wanted. For sure. You know what I mean? But like, are those principles principles that were just for that time or are they like principles that, will stick with you for the rest of your life. Yeah, absolutely, man. And that was one thing uh, I was worried. I mean, there, there was times and it was like, man, am I just doing this just to try to get through this process? But but no, it's definitely it is definitely something that's going to carry on with me the rest of my life. So Amazing. to a point where I'm awkwardly transparent with people when I meet them now. So what does that what does that mean? Like what does that what does that look like? I basically, man, I mean, meet somebody. It's like, hey, you know, if we start talking and you, you want to know me, you're going to know me. Like there's not going to be any show you're either gonna you're gonna like me or you're not, and yeah. it's okay. And yeah. I, I accept that now. So I feel that. That's what's up, man. Well, hey, dude, I'm gonna be watching and uh, looking forward to the seeing this seeing this play out, man. Yeah, for sure. And uh, God still has His hand on your life. Absolutely, He does. I believe it. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, man. Just keep keep doing the things. For sure. Absolutely. Appreciate you again, sir. <laughs> take, take two. Take two is done. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, bro.